Might move our annual to the dome. I need 40,000 people to see what I'm on. Yeah. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Josh Acker, man, and we back with another video. This time, it's gonna be a little bit different. I feel like I'm gonna touch some things and touch on some certain a certain topic that I feel like a lot of people around my age can relate to. And it's some things that I can shed light on that I feel like will help a lot of people out here that watch this video. So I hope you guys can get a lot of what I'm about to talk about because I feel like this is something that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time, but I just kind of been held back and it was some things that was tugging me away from. Before we get into my opinion about how I feel about this certain topic, I'm gonna play some clips from Pastor Mike. He's the head of pastor at Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm greatly appreciative of him. So without further ado, I'm going to stop holding y'all up. And here go these clips. There's a, there's a lot of things that have metrics that don't mean nothing. And somehow if we're not solidly attached to our identity in Christ, we'll start taking on the culture's identity for success. Do you know what success is in the kingdom of God? Obedience. Ah, uh, you missed it. It's not how big it gets. It's not how many people follow it. This is, you have to be okay with your race and your lane. And when God asks you something, you need to say, yes. Success is not about volume. It's about obedience. Oh, I feel something happening to me. So write this down. People weren't made for comparison, yet we are consumed by it in your body but you still will not come places because you don't want to be compared to how you looked in a different season you 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 won't even show up to do what god's asked you to do yes your first time stop comparing your seed to somebody's tree like like but you won't start on your first step because you comparing yourself to somebody who inspired you, be careful how much you listen and look to people who are so great if your self-esteem is not so solid. <laughs> because what it will do is rob you of the first steps that you need to make and you're being so critical. That's what I need to do. I need to do cuff to critical as well. Because some of us are so critical of ourselves that we won't even give ourselves the grace to become. From the clips that I pulled from Pastor Mike, man, it honestly spoke so much volume to me. And with me addressing this first clip about how he was talking about metrics and measurements of what people's real definition of success is, the definition of success has been just altered in a way that clouds people's minds up. Or I feel like a, a main source of it is social media and platforms like Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook. It's so deceitful nowadays. For the people that know me, I say this all the time. Social media is a huge illusion because you never really get to know who a person really is because they're always pushing out good content. You're never going to see too many people being vulnerable and talking about what they really go through in life. And it's a lot of things that people don't see until people put it out there for them to see. For example, I feel like people that are in my generation are so, so, so geared to having those metrics and those numbers. Specifically apps like Instagram. Like, if you're not hitting 1K every post or close to 1K every post and you just popping off, then people won't even give you the time of day to get really get to know you as a person. Like, they feel like you have to have this certain st type of status. To the point, like, people won't even give you the opportunity to even talk to them if you don't even have the same amount of followers as them or you don't get the same amount of likes, or you don't have a certain person that follows you. And that's why I feel like in today's culture, it's just very weird nowadays how people determine how successful you are. So I feel like the whole aspect of success is really not a good way to determine it in, the, in today's society because it's just been altered in so many ways that people don't know what success really is. Now, next I will be addressing about running your own race. This is something that I definitely had to work on because all my life coming up, up until it, up until this point now, weighed me down in a way to not just focus on what I'm doing and, fo and stop focusing on what other people are doing. 
it, it, it was just making my mindset not, not where it needed to be. Sometimes I would get caught up on how people may receive more praise or receive more rewards in a way. For example, like I'm really passionate about football and football has been something in my life that has helped me get to places I never thought I would get. I'm a very hardworking person and I just feel like you get in what you put out. I'm a strong believer in it. I'm a strong believer in hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And sometimes I feel like it was kind of unfair in my life when certain people were getting blessed and I felt like they weren't putting the same time that I was putting in. But I had to understand that everybody has their own race and everybody gets blessed in their own ways. And I just had to be thankful for the opportunities that I had for myself and not compare them because it downplayed mine in a way. And I kind of not have enough grace for myself when I was doing great. Like I was doing some really good things. But since I was comparing, it made my stuff look little compared to what they was doing. You just got to stay in your own lane. You know, you can't worry about what everybody else doing. Because once you get yours and you do what you got to do and handle your business, then that's when everything else will fall in line. And this next thing that I'm addressing really hit at home for me. Because people are never meant for comparison. But we do that and it consumes us in ways that it doesn't need to consume us. Prime example, when people talk about Michael Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron, where it's always comparing like which one is the GOAT, which one is the greatest of all time. Instead, like why can't we all let these legends coexist at the same time? But instead, people compare, compare, compare so much that it ultimately downplays the other one, which in reality, all three of them are great at what they do, and that's playing this, the game of basketball. When it comes to anything in life, people just tend to compare themselves to certain people, and it just consumes their mind, and it ultimately consumes me, because I would compare myself to certain teammates and be like, how is it? how does it come so easy to him, and I work so hard on what he does, but he makes it look really easy. I just need to find my own niche my own advantages and just use it to the best of my abilities. I've always needed to just play by my strength and that's something that I've grown into and that's something that I realized that if I continue to work on that but also work on the things that I want to add to my arsenal, then the sky's the limit. Now with me addressing this fourth clip, it definitely hit deep for me in my heart because it convicted me in a way that I knew it was, it was true. Even to in, today sometimes, which I'm changing and I'm becoming a better Christian athlete by the day. But at times, it was very embarrassing for me in a way to tell people like, this is my third year in JUCO and I'm still there and instead of being in my fourth year. But I just had to understand that my journey is a lot different than a lot of people. I'm honestly so blessed to be in the position that I am today in my life. Yes, at times it was very embarrassing having to tell certain people that I had to take the JUCO route, but Junior college has prepared me for things that I knew I wouldn't have been ready for in my four year, especially with football. I just know that junior college has set the foundation for me on all aspects of my life. And I'm truly grateful for that. But I would be lying to you if I said I wasn't embarrassed sometimes having to tell people. Nonetheless, I just took it as more motivation. I know for a fact that God got me this year. Um, I feel like this year is going to be one of the most life-changing experiences that I'm ever going to have in my life. I can't be more excited to see how it all plays out by the end of the year because so much has happened within these first six months of this year and I have six more six more left to continue to prove myself, to grow, to get better as a person and as a student athlete, not only at my campus, but around the state and maybe even around the country. So I just had to realize like, God put me in this position for a reason. And when Pastor Mike said, don't compare your seed to somebody else's tree, that definitely hit at home for me. Um, for the people that know me, you know how much A.J. Brown means to me. Um, growing up, I've always wanted to be just like him. And not only just him, but other athletes like Odell, just other receivers that were just on the rise. And just honestly, I felt like I could relate to so much. And I would kind of get in my head saying, like, this guy is doing some very great things that I want to do. I'm trying to follow the blueprint in a way that not only he has gave me or 
the things that I see with my own eyes. I feel like I'm following these same exact steps. And in a way, like, why does it feel like I'm not making any progress? But now, this version of me, I am so comfortable to say that I'm so glad that I'm living the life that I'm living right now. Those people motivate me so much. They motivate me in ways that, that I can't even describe to them in certain ways. And I just had to realize that these guys have been blessed in a way that God has put them as, in a sense, the chosen ones. Like, the, these guys are really the ones to be that guy. And I just had to understand that sometimes people like me, it takes time for my story to develop. The difference I feel like between me and them, my heart is way bigger than theirs. They have that God-given ability that for them, all they have to do is just go out and perform. That's that's what people love. And I and me personally, I love that too. But people like me have to work just a little bit harder or just have to do things that sometimes they might not even have to do. But and I just say, listen, you just got to stay motivated and understand that your path, you're creating your own story. These guys have already did what they have to do. These guys are still doing what they're doing. But whenever you have your own unique story, being a Jugo bandit and just ultimately just having this crazy story that's still being written in this moment, everything is just going to be it's going to be one of the greatest stories I've ever told and that y'all get to see. Last but not least, I had to understand that people that are in those positions in life like them, I couldn't allow that to lower my self-esteem because I'd be like, dang, like they're really blessed in a way. And I wish I've said that, like, I'm going to be completely honest. I wish I could live the life that they live. I don't know what all comes with it. It's a lot of things that they might be battling and a lot of people don't understand, but we just see everything from an outside view and that's what culture shows us. And that's why comparison is so deceitful nowadays because it's some things in their life that if I probably seen, I probably would never ever say that statement again. Nowadays, I'm so comfortable in my own skin to just be able to be myself. And that's the biggest thing in today's society that I feel like separates me from everybody else that's around me. I've prayed to God on, on multiple nights and just told him, like, listen, God, just allow me to be unique. Allow me to just separate myself from the pack and just be myself. How can I be unique if I'm always trying to do what these other guys, what these other influencers, what these other people on social media are trying to do? I'm not creating a brand for myself. So I feel like that's what I'm doing now. I really have stepped out into that purpose of my life like look i don't have to be like nobody else i can just be josh Acker. all in all with this battle that i've been having with culture versus kingdom i'm just glad that i'm choosing god because without him i would not be where i am in my life today honestly the journey that i've been on and still being on with it being a daily challenge every single day it's ultimately allowed me to just see the real from the fake and i just want this video to just motivate people in ways that i can't even imagine just allow me to show this vulnerable side of me that I wanted to show people for a long time, but I just had to find out how I wanted to do it. Just ultimately just step out into faith, you know, and not care about what the world has to say about me. Um, Cause people are always gonna say things. People are always gonna give their own opinion on whatever the case may be. And I just had to understand that I have an audience of one and that's Jesus Christ. I'm just thankful that I was able to express this side of me and people see this and I hope take from this that you understand it. it's okay to feel that the way that you feel. You're not going through anything in your life alone. Uplift people, spread love, spread happiness, be a positive person as you go along your journey in life and whatever situations that you encounter on your daily life. And I just want to say, man, I appreciate everybody for all the love and support, man. It, it doesn't matter if I get one like on this, one comment, or one view. Um, I'm just thankful that if I can at least affect one person in a way to follow the purpose that God has set out for you in your life, then that's all that matters to me. With that being said, I appreciate everyone that has watched this video um, and actually got to the end. You know, I'm just trying to attract the audience and just be myself, man, and just grow my page one video at a time. So if this video has touched you and reached you in a way, 
Um, just leave a little comment down below, man. You never know. It can help somebody else out in the comment section. I appreciate y'all for tuning in and watching. I love y'all. Peace out, man. Juice.